goes beyond what the mainstream network lays out for you. Because Sonia Barrett, well, she's got this book called The Holographic Canz uh, Canvas, and uh, she does a program about the, the uh, uh, it's called Sovereign Mind Radio. Our brains, our minds, our spirits are ours. They don't belong to CNN or Fox or anything like that, but they all, but Fox and CNN, they want you to think that way. They want to tell you what to think. Sonia's going to tell you a whole rainbow, dare I say, a plethora of reasons why you shouldn't believe them and why you should make a daily practice of thinking for yourself because that's, that's the biggest thing that the powers that be fear. If the American people began to think they, in, they would be up to their eyeballs in fecal matter. You can substitute whatever word you want for that. So ladies and gentlemen, open your minds, open your hearts, and clap your hands for Sonia Barrett. I guess I can be heard, huh? All right, well, I want to thank you all for taking the time to be here, to listen to whatever I'm going to say. <laughs> now, um, some of what I say um, obviously is going to be somewhat different. You're used to hearing something different because that's why you're here. Um, but just keep in mind that, if nothing else, uh, investigate everything that I've said. At least think about it. Um, because it's really important that we start to move outside of the box and really begin to examine deeply. Uh, we tend to be a society that operates based on fear. And what I'm here to do is to say that there are other options because this is what runs the system is fear. It requires your fear in order for any of this to continue to exist. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information on me in terms of how I got started on any of this. Uh, originally, well, being curious, being curious from, I'm going to say from birth. Uh, and then, of course, growing up in the church, there was, you know, all of, all of that experience for me. Uh, I always had questions that were never answered in, in church. Um, and so my questions sort of remained there with me, not expressing them to anybody since I was a child. Uh, but then as I got older, I started to think about things even more. Left it alone as a teenager, and I went through a divorce um, after a very intense marriage, now a single mother with, with two children to raise. And because of my experiences in my life, I felt it necessary to understand why I was here and what here meant. What did that even mean being here on the planet or just existing period? Uh, I decided that since there was, there's got to be a way to figure this out, to understand more about this. So one of the things I did, um, I did take my Bible because you always hear, uh, read your Bible. And I thought, well, what, is, what does that mean, read your Bible? Uh, I decided that, one, I didn't want the information from another human being. But I decided I was going to look at the Bible again just to see if there's anything I missed. So, <laughs> so I did that, and then I set it aside. Uh, one character in the Bible, the main character, struck a chord with me, and it doesn't matter whether we think the character of Jesus existed or not, but I figured there's got to be some truth to this. If this individual 
could do all of these things, then why can't I? I mean, that was my bold feeling about it. So I decided to set the Bible down, and I sat down. I didn't read any books. I decided that there would be a way for me to understand this without getting it from another human being. I didn't know how to meditate. I didn't know any of that. I never went to a workshop. I didn't go to a lecture. I didn't even know that there were people out there that were thinking in the manner in which I was. So what I did was I found a way to diligently go at trying to figure out meditating. And over a period of time, I managed to pierce what I call a veil of realizing that it was possible for me to explore a space beyond what we call reality. And I realized that every human being was capable of understanding and knowing more about your purpose here. Uh, with that said, uh, I started to get information on science, things that I didn't even understand. Didn't, I would just write the stuff down. Uh, anyway, I moved forward, and that, this is how the book came about. It took 10 years to write that book because I had to grow as this book was being written. Uh, I would have to experience things, and I also had to let go of my illusions because that's what we have. We have a lot of illusions and programs, which is what I'm going to talk about, is the programming of humanity. So anyway, this search led me into understanding that spirituality, there was no way I could figure it out, I could understand it, without exploring <laughs> the controlled, the systems of control, which I realized were then government, corporations, education, religion, and spiritual gurus. I realized that this is where all of the programming was coming from and why you as a human being were never really going to get to the ultimate core and truth of who you are and while you're here. And what I began to understand that we are made up of data. We are made up of information. Every single thing is information, patterns, frequency patterns. It's all science. I'm not a physicist. I never took a physics class. But when I pierced that veil, I was able to understand science in a manner in which I would never have before, where everything just opened up to me. So all I'm saying to you is that everybody in here has that capability. Every single human being. Why do you have that capability? Because everything in creation is made up of the same substance. It's all energy. There is no way that you cannot know. What it is is that you don't remember that you know. So what I'm saying to you is that all of the fear, everything that you deal with, you deal with it because you don't remember who you are and the fact that you know this. And the systems in place, they work at ensuring that you don't wake up to that truth. Because see, when you wake up to it, the game ends. The game ends in the manner in which it has been played. And so we're going to talk about a little bit about the game today. One second, got to get a little bit of water. Okay, so um, now I've said so many times that this is a cosmic game. Some people say, well, what do you mean by that? You betcha. You are in a game. You are in a virtual game. It is holographic. I am not saying anything that's a fantasy. You go and you check science for yourself. And you start to realize that scientists are understanding more about the nature of reality. And it is a giant holographic existence. It's very important to come to the realization that you are in a game. 
The cosmic game is huge. The cosmic game is simply creation at the core of itself trying to see all that it could potentially be. Whatever you cannot imagine or see what that is, what I'm saying, creation, because it, it's, it's, you can't fathom it. It's just unlimited. But it is trying to understand all of the possibilities that it could be, could exist as, and this is simply just one aspect of the game. What you are experiencing as a human being is just one minute aspect of the concept of a game. And in that game, you are understanding what it is to be a human being with all of the possibilities that could exist. If that did not occur, there would be no point to being here, to any, without, for anything to exist. We have to, it has to explore all of, all of the possibilities. Otherwise, everything would fold up and not exist. So first and foremost, recognizing that we are in a game. Let's see. Okay, so these are the systems in place, which I neglected to put that up before, because when I get talking sometimes, I get caught up in it, <laughs> because I get very excited about giving the information to those who are in that mode of wanting to move into something much deeper. It's the only way to transcend this level of the game of limitation. This aspect of the game is based on limitations. It's based on you not remembering who you are, because that is the only way that this level of the experience can be played out. If you remembered everything about who you are, you wouldn't be here. There'd be no reason to be here, because you already know. But the way the game is set up, you come in and you experience, and as you go through these different experiences, there's an opportunity for every human being, even though collectively, yes, on a one level, we are one, but that one that exists had to create the illusion of individuality. And so you, as an individual, has an opportunity to begin to explore that and then take the game to a much higher level. It is for this reason that we are drawn to superheroes and, and, and comic book characters with superhuman abilities because those are natural abilities for all human beings. The difference is, is because we are living in the limited state so we don't remember that. But yet we are drawn to it because something inside of us tells us that we are more. Now, let me see. Now, this I threw in as an aspect of the game because the game involves any and everything, what we call good, bad, and indifferent. It's everything. It's people dancing. It's, it's, it's a riot going on. It's just different aspects of it. A tug of war is really what it is. A chess game is really what it is. People laughing, that's all part of the game. It's all part of it. The, ch the question is, do you choose to continue to be a pawn? You wanna, you're, you're a player and a pawn. It's a paradox. The whole thing is, is just a big paradox because you are teacher and student. You are player and pawn. But you need to now be a conscious game player. You want to be conscious of playing the game so you can decide how you are going to play that game and realize that you do not have to continue to exist and operate from the level that you've been operating in. You are an amazing being. And that's what the system, those we call um, in power, those who, which we're going to go into all of that, but those on, on a certain level of this game that we call the secret societies and, and, and some of these um, uh, mystery schools, these are things that they don't want you to know. They don't want you to understand this. Because the game is that big. It's very big. It's outside of here, but right now we just need to focus on in, uh, uh, here, down here, to figure out how we're gonna, you're going to move beyond this. 
but it's a very huge game. Uh, from religion, government, um, the programming of our children, it starts there. The programming continues into, or, or should I say, with your families, it, there's ancestral programming that state, that's in your genetics. You come in with these programs. And then there's a programming that you are given by your parents and will go into the systems in place with those programs. But I also want to say that we talk about um, uh, the matrix. And I think I shifted a slide ahead, but that's okay. Um, the matrix, we always hear about the matrix, and a lot of people get real confused because you've seen the movie The Matrix, and people say, yeah, 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 you know, it's how it is in the matrix. But what is a matrix? A matrix is simply a system. Um, the universe is a matrix. The earth plane is a matrix. I'm going to explain that further. Every country, every state, every city, every town, it's, it's its own unique matrix. And a matrix is simply, it's, it's simply a, you can consider it a womb, you consider it a, ce a center where that particular um, center operates based on a specific set of principles. And the matrix that we're talking about right now here, it operates on specific principles as to how everything in it will be carried out in terms of the game. So everything is carried out in a particular manner. So it's just, it's a system. Um, just to give you an American Heritage uh, Dictionary definition here, uh, it's a situation or surrounding substance within which something else originates, develops, or is contained. The womb. So if the universe is also a system, the universe itself has a specific set of principles and rules by which it will operate. And everything within the universe, all the planets within you, in the universe, then has to operate based on the principles within the universe. So when we look at the earth plane, what we see is specific environmental laws by which we operate. And your bodies are then designed to operate within the principles of uh, the earth plane, within the, the uh, environmental laws um, of the earth plane. So you are designed to operate within it in that manner. Your vehicle, your vessel, you are in your vehicles, you are in your bodies. Now we have to really begin to stretch our minds on this. It's okay, we really need to stretch our minds on this. You are not your body. You are something much greater than your physical body. And I hear people say that, but you don't live that. Your body lives and, been, and has been operating on what I call autopilot, which means it just operates. So all you do is operate based on programs. That's why you do everything so routinely. You have to begin to engage that aspect of you that's looking out through your eyes. There is something greater in there that is looking out through your eyes. Go look in the mirror. Try staring at your, your own eyes in the mirror. It's a little spooky because you're going to feel somebody, something looking back at you. That's you that's hoping that you wake up. <laughs> and when you wake up to that, guess what? That's when intuition gets sharper. That's when you start to hear and engage that aspect of yourself that's going to tell you where to be because there's going to be an earthquake. It's going to tell you what you need to do, when you need to do it, but you're not listening. You don't listen to that. You let your body run the show. Your body is used to running the show because its job is to keep you alive. Its job, like a ship, is to survive. That's what it knows. That's all it knows is survival. And it hopes that someday it doesn't have to work that hard that you will wake up and you will start listening to that other part so it can go, Phew. okay, I don't have to do that much work anymore. Now you're back in the driver's seat. 
So that's why we get run by fear. And the body is working overtime because your heart's beating fast, you live in um, the survival mode, you, you know, you, we get heart problems, we get all of this stuff going on, and the body's busy trying to balance everything out. So we have become a society, believe it or not, even though we talk about fear, we're addicted to it. We are absolutely addicted to fear and the system knows that. So it uses the 6 o'clock news and all the, the commercials and ads for prescription drugs that the only way, you know, I always say when they come on and they give all the side effects, so basically they need to just say, if you're alive, don't take this. <laughs> you know, just, just say, okay, uh, last thing, if you're alive, just don't take it. Because, but then you hear that and people develop problems behind it because now they got the symptoms. They didn't have them before, but now they have symptoms. That's how amazing the mind is. So that's very important for us to start to recognize that because that's how the programming gets initiated. That's how the programming is initiated. All right, so let's see. I want to move a little bit forward here. Okay, the system is very much like a a computer which runs on programs and so does the system within. We are also systems, at least when operating from the lower vibrational aspect of our physical bodies. These bodies are vessels, systems within which we operate here on earth, as I said. Remember, this is what ancient civilizations like Egypt were in search of. It is what you are in search of. But in the meanwhile, a large contributing factor in maintaining the game is programming. Genetic and social programming. Okay? So you've been experiencing life through a matrix of programs, one embedded in another. Now, let's see. Let's start with uh, one set of programs here. These are the base programs that everybody comes in with. Accepted human lifespan. Okay, I'm not going to get real crazy here because I really could. And I'm <laughs> I could really go into all kinds of uh, trippy things. But let me tell you, when I snapped out of it, it was just the most powerful thing. And I have no regrets. But let me tell you, it, it, it's not something I just gained overnight. I went through a lot of just trials and tribulations because the illusion by which I was living would fall away and that can be painful. That's why we don't like change because it's very painful. But the only way sometimes to move to the next thing is to allow those illusions to fall away. Okay, so accepted human lifespan. There is no expiration date on any human being. There is no expiration date. I know some people are going to go, okay, well, that's crazy stuff. It's all programs. And you can read about that in, in my book, The Holographic Canvas, but we won't go into that heavily today because that's one of the very things, one of the very things that they don't want you to understand. That's one of the things they're trying to figure out. They're trying to understand that. How can they live longer? Because, see, there's a, the great mystery is tied in to your lifespan. That's the great mystery. It's tied into your lifespan as to whether you can continue to be here as a human being and transcend. You've read about it in your Bibles. There is a way. There is a way for all of that. But they don't want you to know that because they want to study that. It's for the elites. And if we keep everybody dumbed down and give them packaged concepts of religion, then you live by those packages and you live in fear and you never explore the possibility of who you are and what you can be. The, general, the second one is the general gravitational limitations. Okay, you're saying, well, you can't defy the laws of physics. I say we can. I say we can. I'm just throwing all this stuff out at you. You take it and you do with it what you want to. And the only way that I say to people that I can get up and do any of this is because I had to get to a space where I didn't really care who thought I was crazy or if you like me or not like me. I understand now 
and I'm, I'm sharing it with a lot of people who did say that they want to understand that too. But the general gravitational limitations, destiny and fate, believing, um, well, anyway, just destiny and faith, unable to see beyond the physical, limited brain access. You use a small amount of your brain. Your, the full aspect of your brain is actually functioning, but you're only aware of one tiny part of it that's operating. And I, I want to throw something else in here. Science tells you that we do not see with our eyes. We see with our brain. Do not see anything with our eyes. Our eyes only act as a lens. Our eyes, the, uh, the brain, it picks up the um, frequency patterns of, of images, light images, color, light, sound, and all of that gets translated. And it's sent back through the cones, through the optic nerve, and then projected back out through the cones and rods in your eyes and creates the image before us. You before me and, and I before you, all a projection. It's all science. A sense of impossibility in going beyond the general programs of this reality. You feel that it is impossible to go beyond what you've been taught is the norm. Human beings can do amazing things, amazing things. The physical strong construct of reality. Everything in our material world is already hardwired into the brain's library of acceptabilities. That's, how percep that's why everything is based on your perception. Because you have a library, the brain holds a library of those things that you can accept as a possibility. We know what a tree looks like. We know what a chair looks like. Only because it's all, in, we have a library, an expansive library over time that the brain has collected as possibilities, as acceptabilities, and then that becomes part of our genetic structure and it's passed on to one generation to the next of acceptabilities. So you get a few people that can see certain things that are outside of the norm. Some people can see spirits, some people, just different things. Well, for everybody, it's not the norm because it's not really part of the brain's library. Now, that's a very significant thing because what you need to do to take yourself off of the programs of just the things of acceptabilities, you have to now move into expanding your perception. When you expand your perception, it means that you do not put a lid on, on what the possibilities are. You do not put a lid on what creation can be. Right now, most people have a lid on it. You cannot put, you can't contain it. Creation could be... You know, I, you cannot even try to figure what it could be. So how can you limit it to what another human being has told you that it could be? That's very important to understand because when you start getting that, you take that lid off and you say, I am ready to understand and to see beyond what I have been seeing. And when you do that, the brain starts to engage you more, you start to use uh, or be aware of other aspects of the brain being utilized, being used, and it opens other pathways. It's through the brain. You know, you create what they call new neural pathways instead of the habitual existence that we have, routine, everything is routine. You create these new neural pathways and, and it just becomes amazingly expansive and that's when you start to see beyond this timeline. But you can't see beyond this timeline now because you're so hardwired into this that you can only figure that this is what creation could be. This is just a minute aspect of you as a human being. It's just this tiny, tiny, minuscule experience that you think is your forever. It is not. You are not even here all the time. Science will tell you, you know, everything is wave and particle form. I'm looking at you and we seem to be seeing each other consistently, but we are not. We appear and disappear. That's just, that's it. We appear and disappear. That's just, that's science. Everything is appearing and disappearing. 
Just like you breathe in, you breathe out, everything is operating in, in a pulsation, a rhythmic process. All of those things are very important to understand that there's a great science at work. If you want freedom, freedom is only going to come from in here. There's nothing out there. That's the illusion. It's only going to come from within. Regardless of what it is, we talk about the government, we talk about corporations, all of those systems are the game and they exist to limit you and to make you think that they are all powerful and that they can hold you down. And they do when you engage in it, which we're going to talk about also, how that is possible, why that works. And, uh, of course, the survival program, which we won't have enough time to deal with that, going into the survival program and how the body's hardwired with that, but very, very important factor. Uh, let's see. A program, first of all, is like a recipe. It contains a list of ingredients and a list of directions that tell the computer what to do with the variables. The variables can represent numeric data, text, or graphical images. The body is like a computer system. That's how we design the things that we design. We design everything based on the whole construct or the whole idea of, of the existence of everything else. It's all technology. We just have to redefine what we understand, what, what, how we define technology. When we say technology, we think of just machines and all of that. Now, technology is basically energy being, being taken and constructed into any form possible, seen and unseen. That's really what technology is, so your body is part of all of that. It's all technology. We just have to step outside of this concept of reality because we're stuck there. Uh, okay, as human beings, we have been operating on a series of functions and thought process, the entire collective. Carl Jung uh, coined the term collective unconscious which is some of the things I talked about with the certain things, programs that are already hardwired into us. Now, I'm going to go to the external programs. <clears throat> now, the external programs are your parents, what they provide you with, your family, community, religious organizations, educational system, government, corporate systems, the overall society. And what that means is that your parents simply give you more of the program that they had and they just, we just pass it on. We just pass it on. Your family, your, uh, uh, the community, they all operate on specific principles. Uh, religious organizations, they hand you a package. See, everything here, family, uh, parents, community, it's all packages of concepts that you're handed. This is the way you're going to operate in society. This is the model of success and failure. Because that's how we've lived our lives, based on these measurements of what society has de uh, defined as success and failure. And everybody has lived trying to meet these guidelines. Some people kill themselves because they can't meet those guidelines. Who the heck set up these guidelines? As to whether if you drive a Mercedes, you are amazing, you are, it qualifies you as an elite because of the kind of car you drive or the size house you have. It's all crazy. But it's all hardwired into everybody, even though you may say that it's not. We evaluate people. When we meet people, we put them in categories. That's why we want to know, what do you do? That's the first thing people ask, like, what do you do? Who cares? What do you mean? Today? You know? When? I do everything. It depends on how I feel. So, you know, I don't want to be any one thing. I learned that. I started to get that. I'm like, oh, okay, so this is what it is. Oh, well, you know, I'm a lawyer. Okay. Is there anything else? You know, what, what else? Do you have to be any one thing? And so we teach our children that they're irresponsible when they don't want to just focus on one thing. Now they have a problem. Is, do they really have a problem? Who says you have to just do one thing? We really need to wrap our minds around this. 
You can do many things. I told my kids that. You can do, you know, my son says, God, Mom, there's so many things I want to do. It's really hard. I said, well, just pick two or three, get started on that, because they think I'm crazy. They say, Mom, you're not happy unless you're doing ten things. <laughs> but it works for me because I've been doing it for a while. And another thing I want to throw in real quickly, the reason why it's important to not get routine and habitual is because it affects you in terms of your, you, even your, your aging. You know why? Because your brain starts to say, there's not much else for us to learn. That's what happens. And it affects the chemicals and the hormones that get produced to keep you young and, 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 and vibrant. That's what happens. It shuts off those chemicals that get produced in the pineal gland, the pituitary gland. It shuts them down because your brain says there's nothing else for us to learn. So it's operating on the programs. Real important. But when you're not operating on the programs and you're acquiring new information, it, it has to activate the chemicals and the hormones that need to flow through because it's like, oh, life. We are, we are ready, we're living. We are learning. It's very, it's very important that we recognize the importance of acquiring higher levels of knowledge. There is much to be understood, and we do not live long enough to get it, to understand it. That's part of what I'm saying to people. We don't live long enough to understand what we need to understand so we can take it to the next level. You complain about the government and the systems. This is what they don't want you to get. The, I'm talking about the people who are at the root. I'm not just talking the, the people that you see, um, um, what do you call them, the senators and all those people. I'm talking about those who, who, who control. We talk about Tavistock um, a little bit and, and some of those other systems. Tavistock Institute, is, um, by the way. I'm not sure how familiar most people are with those institutions. Um, let's see, where are we? Oh, there we are. Okay, I call these the, in, the, the investigators. And the reason why I call them the investigators is because they check you out. They check out how you work, how your body works, how your brain works, how your mind works. This is how all the mind control happens. Because Anybody who is just so out of touch, it, it just be really easy for mind control to occur. That's why I'm saying you've got to get off the programs. You've got to examine your life and see where you are. Is it just fear that I'm engaging in? Is it just a bunch of programs? Because I don't care what anybody says. When you understand a certain level, they know how the game works. They, they cannot affect you. You're let out of the game. In that sense, you're never let out of the game completely, which I'll explain that as well. But there's a point there because this is all based on consciousness. This is all based on frequencies. This is all based on vibration, the vibration of your consciousness. There's a measurement here. We're dealing with electromagnetic um, energy and what that means. There's Tavistock Institute. Um, let's see. I want to... Explore that a little bit. Tavistock Institute, I won't read a lot of it, but was uh, founded in London in 1946 with the aid of a grant from the Rockefeller Foundation set up for the specific purpose of actively reflecting the psychological and social sciences uh, to the needs and concerns of society. The circumstances of World War II um, brought together an unusually talented group of psychiatrists, clinical and social psychologists and anthropologists in the setting of the British Army where they developed a number of radical innovations in social psychiatry and applied social science. Now, I'm not going to go too far because we don't have too much time, but Tavistock Institute is a major player. How many people out here are familiar with Tavistock Institute? They're major players. You need to check into them. All those things, eugenics, all that stuff is all tied into, into them. And they decide, the sad part is that they're all tied into 
Ugh, all the health care screenings, all the stuff that they say they're doing for you. No, it's all study. It's all study. And you really need to understand that. Don't buy into all of that. It's very easy for you to engage in it because they make promises that sound good. And that's all that it is. It sounds good, but it's really just all about studying more about how you function and what medications they can give you. What can they do? How can they create a, a, a more evolved version of a dumbed-down human being. And Edward Bernay, how many people are familiar with Edward Bernay? Okay, just a few more people should because he has really been considered the father of public relations. It's why we have a nation of consumers just buy, buy, buy stuff because that's what they did. They, they, they programmed and found, conditioned and found a way to get everybody all hooked in to this buying, buying, buying. Um, if we understand the mechanism and motives of the group mind, it is now possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without them knowing. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's so beautiful. <laughs> The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes uh, formed our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. That's who I'm talking about. It's not the people you hear about. It's the people you don't know about. That's where all the power always lies. It's not on all these people you keep talking about. It's the other people. It's the people you don't know who they are. You don't know who they, you know, we talk about they. Who are they? And then we've got Skinner. Okay, everybody here familiar with Skinner? Uh, okay, so what we've got here is I've got the Borg and I've got all the, because that's what they're creating. That's what they're creating. I mean, we can't go into the merger, the man merger machine thing going on, but that's going on. But you're going to love it because it's going to be convenient and it's going to be like going out and buying a vacuum cleaner. It's going to be the same thing. It's gradualism. People gradually move into it because... Well, you know, it's more convenient. And it sounded like a joke when we talk about people marrying robots in a time to come. Sounds like a joke now, but you know what? They will. Because they won't, you know, they can program them to, you know, not talk back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to get a little boring because I kind of like, you know, a little, little, you know, challenge there. But all of these things, so we have to see how gradualism works, though. Why we move into the things that we move into so easily is because it's gradually done. These guys are amazing. They've been at this for a long time. Okay, so Skinner. Charlotte Iserbeet, I don't know if anybody's familiar. I love her. She, is, she was the ex-senior policy advisor for the Department of Education during the Reagan era. Um, I have a couple of her interviews out there, amazing woman, and she was a whistleblower. So she blew the lid on a great many things that were being planned for the educational system. And what we see today is a result of that. What we call education is not the same. I don't care if you have a college degree. You have to realize that all these big wigs change the whole concept of education, the school books, everything in the college arena. All of those things have been changed. So you get an education, but it's not the same anymore. It's all uh, a, a programmed group mind concept. And we've taken, they've taken the concept of the one mind, you know, the new age, we talk about that, but that whole thing about one mind, they've turned it into something different where now it's a group mind. People can hardly think as individuals. They're not really taught that anymore. So it's really hard to solve problems. Uh, problems when they come up if you don't know how to be an individual. Um, so I'm going to read quickly uh, an excerpt from Charlotte. Um, let's see. Um, the Soviet man, 
she talked about that, the Soviet man education, real quickly here. Gosh, I hope I can see it. Um, okay, this was in the 70s. Behavior modification. She said, well, behavior modification, what they're trying to do is strip the individual of their personality. They consider that the individual is an animal. That's where you start. You really could start with Wilhelm once the German in Germany in the late 1800s. His laboratory there and Pavlov studied, and oh, his laboratory there and Pavlov studied under once. Um, a lot of people thought all the psychologists studied under Pavlov, but once is very interesting. He figured. In our pretty, he figured out pretty quickly that psychology, it's the study of the soul. Well, in all of his experiments, he wanted to change people, and he couldn't do it. It's very hard to change the soul. The soul sort of floats around and escapes your grip. So he changed the whole system to human beings are animals, and they are to be trained not educated to be trained and they do that through stimulus response it actually works on the nervous system versus the soul and the brain behavior modification conditioning by bypasses behavior modification conditioning bypasses the brain and they had to figure out different techniques to bring this all about. Now notice she talked about through stimulus response. Stimulus response. What do we hear that word a lot? What do we hear it with? The stimulus package. Why was it called the stimulus package? I've often wondered that. Why was it called the stimulus package? They don't name or do anything just because. Okay, we talk about the nervous system, which we don't have time to go into that, go into that today, but again, I'm telling you, it's all science. The words that are used, it triggers something in you. And stimulus, when you think of stimulus, it conjures up all kinds of other concepts. So you're constantly being stimulated by the thought of this stimulus package. <laughs> Anyway, um, all right, we could talk about all this stuff all day long. I don't even know how much time I have left. But uh, anyway, the, um, the culture code, there's a gentleman uh, named Dr. Uh, Clotaire Rapai. Um, wonderful man. I interviewed him. He wrote a book called The Culture Code, which if you haven't had a chance, to, everybody should read this book. He goes in and he explains... Because corporations, government, they've all hired him at, at, at many different points. The, the, the car dealerships, the car companies, to figure out how to come up with the next car or whatever it is for you based on him studying and getting to the core of human beings for certain things in your mind. That's how they came up with the Cherokee. That's how Bernay, they came up with the Volkswagen, but in, we're talking in our time now, they came up with the Cherokee and the hotels come up with, with designing a bathroom based on you, things you don't even know about yourself, based on what your first imprint of, of uh, independence was. The code was, twi it was toilet paper. You figure, well, what, what did that mean? Because toilet paper that when you first learn how to wipe your butt, that was your first sense of independence. Sounds crazy, huh? But that's what they did. They get right into you and they figure these things out and then you go, oh, I really love the Cherokee. You don't know why. This is how amazing it is. You don't know why. You think you like, you know, I always say the color red because you like it. Do you, know, do you know why you like it? Do you know why you like anything you like? That is my question. That was my question. I'm like, well, who am I? What do I know? When I started to realize that pretty much everything about me was attached to some kind of program, I'm like, well, what? What? Then I was just blank. So now you go through this whole thing. Do you ever get rid of all the programs? That's a good question. But the main thing is to wake up to the realization that you've been operating on programs. 
And then you take it from there. And I wish we had more to, to really go into uh, some in-depth. I, I have a lecture that I did. It was five hours on programming also that is there. Um, let's see. I've got to race through it here. Okay, so mass, mass mind control, which you see there. Okay, so get out the box. That's, that's all I have to say right there. It speaks for itself. Get out the box. You want to find freedom? Don't play around. Go ahead and, and, and explore. Don't just take a little bit here. Okay, well, I'm just going to... No. You're being comfortable, and you're not going to figure out anything just by saying you're going to just look at this. You, you, how are you going to see? That's attached to something else. Everything you touch is attached to something. What's the core of it? It's like a disease. You know, when they say they're going to fix this over here, they say, I don't, I don't do the doctor thing. I haven't in years. I trust myself more than anything else to take care of me, and I raise my kids like that. But you have to come into that space. But they fix one little thing over there, and then that's supposed to be gone, and then the rest of the body fall, breaks out because they never got to the core. They never got to the root of what started the problem in the first place. Is there a possibility to get to, get to the root of anything? But by the end of this, I'm going to make sure in the end you, you see to some degree you know, where, where, where that root is, or at least where to, where to begin. It's endless. Anyway, uh, so anyway, so mind control uh, plus um, mind control pa uh, parasites, can't get into that either, but believe it or not, they can use parasites, yes, to control a population. You know, we have a lot of parasites here with a lot of the, the food and stuff being exported. Yes, it com it's coming in on that. But understand the devious nature the deviousness of all of that. Parasites do get in your system and they do control. They do. They integrate with you. And that's how they know, they know what you're thinking. They'll make you crave sweets. They'll make you do all kinds of stuff. They're very intelligent. Remember that everything is looking to exist. Everything is looking to experience life. And your body is a universe to something like a, a, par a parasite or to something tiny, microscopic. And within that microscopic, um, uh, whatever you want to call it, it, that's its own universe too. So everything is a universe onto itself, but everything is looking to exist. Everything is looking to experience life, and it will experience life in whatever way it needs to experience life. Okay, um, biowarfare, the targeting of population by understanding the, the genetic differences. That's another major thing. Um, in June 2000, the U.S. government and corporation uh, um, Celera Genomics together announced that they had practically completed a map of the typical human genome. That was very important because if you're going to have to deal with different people, different races, you're going to have to study them. That's why they spend so much money, there's so much funding for studying, and then they just throw you a little something, and you go, oh, that's neat, that's nice that they figured it out. <laughs> yeah, we pay them to, to figure out how to control us. They do. They get you to do that. So, um, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, and also, let me say, remember also that disease measures a frequency, just like everything else, and can be imposed by sound waves. So in other words, the frequency of a particular disease can be injected on a people by using the appropriate sound waves, the right frequency, and in studying the human genome, it allows for the possibility of affecting people of a certain genetics while others would be completely unharmed. Now doesn't, that all, doesn't all of this sound like a video game? It's a big, giant virtual game that you're in, and I'm not, again, I'm not telling you this for you to be uh, in fear. Nothing you hear at this conference in the next couple of days should be about fear. But if you can keep in mind, you're in a game. How do I want to play this? Okay, I'm hearing what's going on. It's a lot of different aspects going on. What do I want to do? Okay, so out of the box. Um, okay, well, we could talk about the economy, but I don't have time on that. Um, Okay, the, let's see, the uh, economy as a language of exchange. Okay, so basically the concept, um, or so termed economy, as language of, ex of exchange is a system of measurement and 
comparative value, I'm going to explain that, comparative value, um, the, sourcing, the sourcing of the output of one's life force, whether it be based on the exchange harnessed or secured through a product or service, the bottom line is that in the end, it's all about your life force and someone is either trying to capture it, harness it for free or charge you for having uh, a life force. Okay, so what is free energy? We hear that thrown around, free energy. Okay, what I'm telling you is free energy is not just what you think. Free energy, the reason why free energy is so suppressed, it means you. It means you, believe it or not. It's the freedom of you to be a co-creator, to remember who you are. That's the suppression. That's the real suppression of, of, of energy. When we talk about free energy, we just think it's just the suppression of, of, of the use of um, natural uh, resources. You are a natural resource. The only difference is they use our life force to go to these jobs and to wear you out, basically is what it is. And you, I mean, we can go through a whole process of that. But the life force that comes from you, that's, where, that's what they pay you for. They pay you for the energy you expel from yourself to do this. And you don't get paid enough for what they end up doing to you. Because they prepare you for, what, uh, retirement, um, where you automatically know that you're going to get sick. You automatically, it's a given. You just know. So you spend your whole life preparing for this. How insane is that? You spend most of your life making sure that you have a good retirement package. Hello, wake up. Live. Don't spend your life planning your retirement. You must live. That is what is being done here. And then when it's time to retire, you get ill. You're sick and then you're still right back in their hands again because now they're going to give you medication. Because they're practicing. They already tell you I'm practicing medicine. They're never going to get it right. <laughs> they already tell you that. So it's not like they don't tell us what they're doing. They tell you, but you just, you know, my mother went, my grandfather went, everybody went, so you just do it. I, you know, I just don't trust them. I trust, I really just truly trust myself. My body knows when something is wrong. So um, what is free energy? The suppression of gold, I wish we could go into that, but there is more to it than that because everything measure, measures a frequency and there's a reason why gold was removed, major, major scientific reasons on all this. The illusion of money, a digital world moving numbers around, that's what's happening. It's just digits being moved around. There is no such thing as money. It's, you know, creating money from nothing. They want to do it, but they don't want you to do it because there is a way that we should be able to create from nothing. Because there's nothing really there anyway. Who is it? It's just made up stuff. <laughs> Symbolic of um, the free energy concept. However, the self-appointed rulers are the only ones allowed to play. Currency. What does that mean? Current. Streams of energy. That's what currency is. That's why they call it that. It's just, an, it's just a, a current. It's electromagnetic. It's all energy. They put a quantitative value on um, they put a quantitative value on what they say ten dollars is. Now, if you understand science a little bit more, you realize that all these increments measure a particular frequency pattern that is etched into your consciousness as an acceptability of what we have agreed that ten dollars or twenty dollars is. There is a science to this. This is science, people. It's all it is. It's science. And you buy into it. They're like, okay, that's all I have. Well, is it really? Because I always say when I put $10 in my wallet, you're, once you close that purse, uh, what is it, uh, like Schrodinger's cat, th that concept, do you know that it's still $10? Is there anything in there? What's in there? But they get you to believe that this is what it is. Right now, that's all they're doing is moving numbers around. Paper. That's why they can throw around whatever that stimulus package is, because they're just moving numbers. Just numbers, just digits. You know, there's no paper involved. 
There's a lot, there's a major deception, but they bank on you not getting it. They bank on you not getting it. It's like they won't know. We'll just let them work and pay this money back that we never had. <laughs> it was, it was the same thing they do with those mortgages. You know that. There's, no, there's nothing. Nobody gives you any mortgage. Just create a checking account with your name slapping on there that you don't even know about, and then you start making them money when you start making those payments. There is no money. Anyway, this is an endless game with multiple levels, a game of endless potentials. Now, we won't have time to go into all these other things here. I um, uh, wanted to go into a little bit about quantum physics, but we kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, I want to get ooh, into this. <sighs> oh. Okay, uh, real quickly, real quickly. I'm going to throw in this piece real quick about... Um, Physics here. Um, uh, David Bohm, I don't know how, if you guys are familiar, uh, came along from the University of London. This was an experiment that was, was done and understood in, in reference to particles. Oh, I'm going to have to go back a little bit. Um, okay, what they discovered was, okay, 1982, a French physicist named Alan Aspect and his team discovered that under certain circumstances, subatomic particles such as electrons are able to instantaneously communicate with each other regardless of the distance separating them. It doesn't matter where they, whether they are 10 feet or 10 billion miles apart. Somehow each particle always seems to know what the other is doing. The problem with this feat is that it violates Einstein's long-held um, tenant that no communication can travel faster than the speed of light. Okay, we're going to skip all that other stuff. Now, okay, David Bohm came along from the University of London and said that he believed that aspects findings imply that objective reality does not exist. That despite its apparent solidity, the universe is at heart a phantom, a gigantic and splendidly detailed hologram. Okay, real quickly, I'm throwing that in because I want you to understand this concept that they talked about with the particles, where no matter how far they were apart, they were basically still one particle. That would be you. That's what I'm saying to you. That would be you. It is the illusion of all of this separateness and madness going on, but it would be you. And with that said, that is why you know everything, but you will only engage in the memory of certain things according to where we are on our journey. We cannot remember it all because the game, there will be no reason to experience the game. So we're only going to access memory according to how we as the individual are evolving. You do not have to wait for an entire group to evolve yourself. If we had more time, we could talk about that. How you as an individual are really determining what's out there. So you as an individual have to, you need to work on you. Just work on where you are. When you do, you're going to shift everything else around you. And it won't seem like it does right now. You shift everything around you. And I'm not talking just fantasy stuff. I'm talking the real, it's really true. It really, really happens that way. It's all, again, it's all science. It's all science. Okay. Um, Ooh, can't get into that, can't get into that. Okay, I'm going to get into this real quickly. Okay, so this is where I might lose some people, but that's okay. You stayed this far. Oh. <laughs> okay, ancient mystery schools and modern day secret societies. Um, let's see, okay. Okay, so with that said, this has been the objective of the ancient and modern day mystery schools and secret societies is to re-engage with this deeper aspect of consciousness, which I was not able to completely go into. Through the creation of religion and packaged spiritual concepts and beliefs, people have been redirected away from the natural flow of the engagement of their spirit or inner guidance. Okay, real quickly. I'm going to talk about this real quickly. Um, okay, Ascended Masters, I want to say the New Age movement, yes, it's a huge part of um, a creation by many of these elite groups. Um, yeah, we always say the CIA, but they're involved in everything. So, but there are other groups <laughs> that are involved. 
these there are what you call the ascended the ascended masters uh, different different levels up they they're another leg of the game okay it's not this is not an illusion just like we are here there are other levels of the game and those that you call they 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 report to these other levels of the game and then they give out the information and that's the reason why we keep hearing in the new age movement lord maitreya is coming and all these other people are coming to be in control and in charge and this is what the new world order and the new age movement new age means new world they're the same thing same thing same thing new age meant new world you had hitler who was waiting around for that because he was looking into this studying all of this all all of that that's what it was about for him this is just another level of it it's a more sophisticated version of the new world order and it's not unfolding like you thought it would again gradualism you're not going to know when it really hits you because you know why they hope that you stay distracted with racism with all the other stuff they want you to be so distracted that you will never know when they usher you into this new age new world this is what is going on and there's a great great science at play here um the messiah complex i talk about the messiah complex because has anybody wondered why we feel that we need to worship something or someone has anybody thought about that where is that coming from i don't mean to offend anyone but if you were amazing and great and the all whatever would you need to be worshiped would you need to be worshiped and if your parents are human beings wouldn't you be a human being too absolutely so the vastness of creation you are as great as the vastness of creation except for you are creation in a limited capacity so that you can enjoy being this particular experience and it really is beautiful in spite of the insanity of it all <laughs> it's a paradox i told you that in the very beginning okay so real uh, real quickly um i always wonder all these messiahs how come there's no women it's always a man coming i don't understand that this just you notice that i have heard not one thing about a woman showing up this is all men all men okay anyway <laughs> so that right off the bat tell me there's a problem I'm like, okay, there's a problem. Mhm. <laughs> But anyway, the Freemasons, the Muslims, the Jews, the New Agers, the, the Christians, which I remember I grew up in the church. Everybody's looking for a Messiah. Stop it. Stop. There is no Messiah. Nobody is coming to save you. It's an illusion. You are the only one that can save yourself. and you don't have to save anybody else there's nobody to be saved everybody is here on their own individual plan their own individual virtual reality show they're on their own virtual vacation let them be don't try to save them because it'll backfire and they will stone you <laughs> i'm only up here because i got invited otherwise i would never say a word to you I don't infringe on anybody. I know where I'm going and I know what I see the game and I know what it's about. So I leave people alone. Oh, okay. All right. A little bit of time. Okay. Um oh, Okay, let's see uh real quickly. Oh, I want to throw this in. You take it for what it's worth. Interestingly enough, Mark Twain wrote a book that was never uh published, um uh, never finished, I should say, called The Mysterious Stranger. Anybody familiar? called the mysterious stranger and in the mysterious stranger he refers to the stranger as number 44 number 44 according to mark twain represents a young satan anybody with me <laughs> anyway rep represents a young satan and i thought that was really really interesting and i'm going to tell you real quickly why i thought it was interesting I have seen and I'm not calling this person Satan. Um I've seen the images of our new president, lots of halos. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. Lots of halos. 
um, and uh, uh, the pin glistening, lots of all that stuff going on. Um, number 44. Okay. Now, the other aspect of this is, um, even as a super, you know, su Superman, we've got all of that stuff. Um, it's supposed to be light bearer. Anyway, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, um, including their desire for spiritual enlightenment. Okay, other thing real quickly. The term light workers, light bearers, um, uh, Illuminati, let's see, waiting for a Messiah. Okay, these are all the people waiting for a Messiah. I've named those. Same light. Light workers, name became common language for New Agers. Light bearer. Illuminati, same thing. There's light. Luciferians, light bearer. Morning star, Jesus, morning star, light bearer. What I'm trying to tell you is this. I'm not, I'm not condemning anybody here. But what I'm trying to say to you is people are being ushered into something that you have no idea. You think you got, you've got all these different messiahs? No. In the end, the way it's been structured is everybody is going after the same messiah. So for me, I was trying to figure out who are these people talking to? I mean, really, who, who? We must stop and ask. I asked that as a child. Why must I fear God? I don't understand that. I'm supposed to be loving. Why am I having to be afraid? And, and why would this the being want to be worshipped? Okay? Question all of that. There's something else going on here. Don't have time to get into that. Also, the United Nations. When the United Nations gets all involved back in 1999 and had Lord Maitreya's speech given at the United Nations, you want to question that too. That's the reason why United Nations don't seem to do what you think they should do. United Nations talk to seat. It's Society of Enlightenment and Transformation. That's what it's called. It's a lot of stuff going on over there. There's lots of stuff. And it's all tied in together because guess what? They're part of the New Age, New Order, and this really, in the end, what they have, how it's set up is, they recognize the ushering in of these many, uh, of this Messiah as different offices being occupied. Just like we change presidential seats and we change the cabinet, it's the same thing. Our corporate structure is set up on the same principle. There's one concept, one formula, and it's set up on the same principle. And we must recognize that. So when they are talking about Lord Maitreya coming, you know what they're actually talking about? You can go research it for yourself. They're looking that there is a Christ. The Christ is considered an office. It's considered an office. And who is going to be the new Christ for earth? Who is going to be the new one to oversee that? And it all leads back to light, the light bearer, which is considered to be Lucifer. I don't, I'm not saying Lucifer is good or bad. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that that's what it is. That's how it's structured. That's, that's really what it is. It is the ultimate force, the ultimate uh, ruler of the planet. You check your Bible. You check all your stuff. That's what it is. You got it. You, what you have to do is follow the, 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 um, the dots. Trace it. Just go trace everything yourself, and you will see that there's a great plan here. There's a great plan, and you have to decide if you want to be a part of that plan or not. Um, let's see. Okay, well, you see how they're playing a uh, chess game in your head. And, um, you know, everybody in their robotic position feeling really good, going to work, doing their thing. Um, they got your head on a platter also, and this guy over here is like he's at work. That's how I used to feel when I go to work. <laughs> but in the end, because I'm having to cut a lot of this short, in the end, what it comes down to is you, your awakening, your whole body has to be reactivated. This vehicle, this vessel has to move into activation once again and engage in the deeper aspect of who you are beyond the physical life that you live. And it's powerful. And the game never, you never leave the game. However, you can leave, you can transcend out of this limited aspect of the game and begin to move into being 
a, um, a more, what should I say, a more awakened, a more aware, a more evolved consciousness. And all that it means when I'm talking about consciousness is you are acquiring larger aspects of that consciousness, and that's simply awareness. It is self-awareness, being aware of who you are, being aware of self. And the larger amounts of this self-awareness, this consciousness that you acquire, the more you shift your, vib your vibration. And I wanted to explain, too, I didn't bring any graphs of that, but that's why we operate here in this reality based on the Hertz field or radio, wave, radio waves, because we are down here on this lower level. And what, our, what the objective is for us to transcend to higher levels of that spectrum, of that electromagnetic spectrum. So you've got radio waves at the bottom, and then you have... Um, uh, visible uh, light, I'm trying to remember off the bat, visible light uh, um, or in, infrared, um, ultraviolet light, uh, x-ray, gamma ray, uh, and, it, and it goes up to zero point, zero point spin, the zero point energy. Zero point is extremely significant because that is what you are trying to connect with every time. And you're connecting with it always. You just don't remember that you're connecting with it. But it is getting to that space. That's how you create. That's where you create from. You don't create from down here. You don't create. That's why it takes so long for anything to happen when you try to make it happen. You try to desire it. Because you're, you're trying to make it happen from your limited program body. When you go, when you move from that space, you move into a space where you are the core essence of who you really are beyond being a physical body. And that's where you create from. And it just all falls back, falls through time into this timeline down here. Yes, down here. Because it, it gradually has to fall through time and then particularize it, becomes a particle or becomes whatever the accepted form needs to be for this environment. But what it is, is we are transcending beyond this radio um, field, this, this, this radio waves. And uh, with that said, geez, I've never rushed through a presentation like this because I, I can talk. <laughs> my, 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 <laughs> my kids would tell me, they say, Mom, we, when we were little, we used to wish you would just beat us because when you start talking... We wish you would stop. <laughs> it just beat us. Now they can just tell me. They say, yeah, 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 Mom, I got it. But anyway, you are the scroll. I want to leave you with that piece. You are the great mystery. They don't want you to figure it out. You are the scroll. Everything that you need is contained within you. And you need to remember that when all this insanity comes up, because there's going to be more of it, recognize the power that exists within you that you already are. And when you shift, there is nothing that can penetrate the vibration of that consciousness that you will shift to. Absolutely nothing. And they hope that you do not figure it out. But I want you to understand it because they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to understand it. So with that said, I hope that I was able to be as clear as possible in that short period of time.